Hi friends. Now today we have uh, we are continuing with our series that we have started on Dams YouTube channel, Dams Daily YouTube channel on integrated medicine. Today we have chosen and I have with me today Dr. J Surya Kumar and today he is a microbiologist. I am a radiologist uh, and we will try together to look at a case of opportunistic infection in AIDS and we will try to give you an integrated picture. Okay, and that is the current pattern of exams in USMLE and that is a similar pattern which is being used in exams like AIMS and exams like NEET PG. Our goal will be to give you a, a together picture how an infectious disease specialist and a radiologist looks at a patient with AIDS and how does a patient would present. So the entire goal of the discussion would be based on the patient presentation and how we go about it. So I will now, now invite Dr. Surya Kumar to talk about the uh, patients presenting complaints and the initial workup. Yeah, actually a 37 year old male known PLHV. PLHV means patient living with HIV and AIDS for since two years. So uh, I just want to interrupt and ask uh, is that the uh, way that we tell uh, yes. because a lot of undergraduates are listening to us today. Yeah, we should not call them as HIV positive or AIDS positive like that and all. We need to respect them so we calling them as patient living with HIV and AIDS. So we shortly call PLHV for since uh, two years on ART with irregular treatment there is poor adherence and there is no uh, regular follow up he is admitted with the following complaints dry cough dyspnea on exertion and fever of three weeks duration and the history says scanty sputum and progressive breathlessness since last week okay so uh, dr surya uh, what would you like to summarize on the basis of history that we have heard so far and the, uh, as per the history he is having some problem in the respiratory tract and he is a hiv positive cough and breathlessness usually we think of tuberculosis with the three weeks duration th uh, three weeks duration more than two weeks duration is suspect of tuberculosis okay. Okay. but it's a dry cough usually okay. tuberculosis cough cough with produ productive cough actually okay. a second thing uh, uh, fever will be three weeks duration. Cough may be have three weeks duration, but there is no three week continuous fever uh, in tuberculosis. We can't, that's a rare presentation. Okay. If you have evening raising temperature, mild fever will be there in tuberculosis. Okay. So if we, uh, you know, go on to the examination findings and the lab findings in this patient. Yeah. Actually, uh, he was diagnosed. The post history says he was diagnosed as uh, PLHIV two years before by a rapid method in a ICTC. ICTC are government approved centers, NACO approved centers. So we can follow the result. We can believe the result. They have excellent quality control system is there, and the baseline uh, CD4 count at the time of two years before it was 160. It was low only. Then they started the ART two years before in a ART center. It's a government approved center. At the time of two year, uh, the starting the ART, they do the baseline test like hepatitis B, VDRL and sputum AFB, all will be negative at the time of initiation of ART. That is routine to do before? That is routine to that. Okay, to okay. that. And uh, uh, what was the physical examination Cur findings? Current physical examination says temperature was high, 100.6 Fahrenheit, pulse was 130 and blood pressure was uh, 94 or 64, respiratory rate was little high, 28 and oxygen saturation only 91 percent breathing room, room air. Okay. So, uh, if I ask you to summarize so far, so wha what all we have so far? He is a, a PLHIV patient. He is a PLHIV patient. Uh, two years he is on ART but not taking the ART properly. That is okay. the main clue. So Third proud. thing, dry cough with the scanty sputum and oxygen saturation is low and he is having fever. These are all the uh, features we need to proceed. Okay. So, we, we are dealing with a respiratory infection, respiratory infection in an immunocompromised patient yes. so far. But immunocompromised patient we should check other systems also. Okay. Now the all other systems are normal as per okay. the examination says. So as a part of evaluation a chest x-ray was advised and in this chest x-ray the outstanding fi finding is if you look at the x-ray carefully, look at the central part of the x-ray, you will find that in the central part of the x-ray in the perihilar area there is uh, some net like appearance some linear net like appearance this is called as the interstitial pattern so you have bilateral perihilar predominance interstitial shadowing in the lung interstitial shadowing in the lung and in such people an important thing to remember is the hyla look normal and the cp angle look clear hrct is the investigation of choice to be done to evaluate the patient further radiologically in this HRCT, the outstanding finding is ground glass appearance in the lower zones, predominantly in the lower zones. So what is this ground glass appearance? This ground glass appearance on CT means increased attenuation. 
increased attenuation on the CT but the bronchial and the vascular architecture can still be made out it is not obscured and another thing that you look at if you look at the left upper corner if you look at the left upper lobe you will see a air filled bleb that is a pneumatosteel so there are pneumatosteel formation there is ground glass appearance in the lower lobe so if I add only the radiological findings that I have I have perihilar predominant interstitial finding ground glass appearance pneumatosteel formation I would keep PCP pneumonia as one of my differential diagnosis in the radiology and for people listening to me today I would like to add here a few points one is that lymphadenopathy and pleural effusion are particularly uncommon in this PCP pneumonia and if you see this patient has lower low predominance however if the patient was on a prophylactic aerosolite ther therapy then this might reverse as well but this is if the patient was not so now I'll ask Dr. Surya to talk about the lab findings yeah once the differential diagnosis as pneumosis is derovacia pneumosis is pneumonia the laboratory need to confirm the diagnosis usually sputum is okay but sputum is having poor yield of this organism induced sputum is better if you have but ideal specimen is bronco alveolar lavage even though it's a little invasive procedure but that yield is very good if the patient is negative for that induced sputum or bronco alveolar lavage we want to confirm if situation permits warrants we can go for transbranchial biopsy or open lung biopsy this give very good yield but very difficult to get the specimen so ideal current situation is bronchial alveolar, alveolar lavage ball is the very best specimen to diagnose this condition and I I'll, like to add here is the you know, when I'm talking about radiology we looked at the CT HRCT we looked at the x-ray there's something called as gallium 67 scan this gallium scan is particularly sensitive to pneumocystis pneumonia yes. so that also has value if that is available in your hospital that is very sensitive to this infection so I'll ask uh, Dr. Surya to talk about the microscopic findings in this patient yes. once we got the specimen the bronchial valve lavage the idea because it's non cultivable fungi we cannot uh, do cultivation at all so we are doing a typical fungal stain gomari methanamine silver nitrate stain it's a silver nitrate the silver that wall is reduced the nitrate to nitrate it will give block color appearance see the cyst are about 5 to 7 micrometer in diameter like rbc size and it's round shape or cup shape see this patient we have typical cup shape see the center in the uh, green background you can get a small dot like structure rbc size that shows the cyst of pneumocystis that is that uh, if we say it's very specific it's diagnostic you can say the person is having a uh, pneumosis corneal pneumonia so any any word about the treatment in this patient yeah treatment is very it's very difficult to diagnose but very easy to treat so uh, once we confirm the diagnosis by the radiology it's supported by the microbiology then we can start tablet cotrimaxazole bd for at least three weeks after that we can do further uh, sputum examination as well as uh, ct scan where the resolution of this uh, these are things we can go for it so if we summarize what we learned today is that in a patient with a, a PLHIV patient with uh, CD4 count less than 200, not able to maintain oxygen saturation, dry cough, prolonged fever, we think of opportunistic infections like y yes. PCP? Oppo PCP is the first common, first. of that yeah. the first choice we can think actually because okay. uh, HIV and with low CD4 count, low oxygen saturation that direct towards PCP. PCP and then we uh, when we add the x-ray findings perihilar interstitial shadowing ground glass appearance could have septal thickening could uh, but usually the lymph node and the pleural effusion would not be there pneumatocele formation will be there and you uh, when we add to it we we've also learned the gallium scan is very sensitive and we've looked at the treatment option options yes. so I hope uh, you people enjoyed uh, the integrated approach that we have created through this dams unplugged series if you enjoyed this series please you know get back to me or Dr. Surya on you know Facebook or YouTube or Twitter wherever you're following us and please do follow us on Dams Daily channel on, on YouTube for more such integrated videos in future we are committed to making education easier for you to understand thank you very much we wish you all the best thank you